Hello and welcome to my basement. I use artificial sinew for a variety of my little silly projects and I ran out the other day and I looked on Amazon Prime and I found a thousand foot spool for ten dollars and change plus tax free shipping with Amazon Prime. When I got this big spool in I started thinking what can I do with it? And what I decided to do for one of my first projects is to make a artificial sinew reverse wrap bow cord for a new fire bow that I'm making. And this was my this was my first attempt. It came out really quite nice. This is a 12 strand, three ply, reversed wrap, artificial sinew cord with an eye loop that I spliced in. And it turned out so nicely that I thought that I would make another one and show you how I did it. Uh, so we're going to reposition the camera real quickly and we'll come back and show you how it's done. All right. What I've got here are 12 strands of artificial sinew. I've cut each of them to be six feet long. I've tied them off eight inches from the end because I need eight inches to make my eye loop. I'll use about half of that uh, to do some reverse wrapping and then I'll leave the tails and splice it into the main body of the cord a little bit later on. I'll show you how that's done. So my cord strands are each six feet long. I need eight inches for the loop. The rest of the cord after I finish all my reverse wrapping will draw up about 25% or so leaving me with a cord that I anticipate is going to be about four feet long when it's all done. So this is going to be a three-ply reverse wrap cord that I'm making. I've separated into four, four strands into three separate bundles. All right, we're going to start with the middle group and pull in real tight. I'm going to reverse wrap, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap that I'm going to wrap the top towards me really tight, as tight as I can get it, and swap that over the top group. Then I'm going to go to the bottom, and I'm going to reverse, I'm, excuse me, I'm going to wrap that towards me as tightly as I can, and then I'm going to flip the whole thing over. And then I go to the middle again, roll the top towards me, flip it over the top, roll the bottom one towards me, flip the entire thing over. Once again, middle, flip it over, bottom, flip the whole thing over. Middle, flip to the top, bottom, flip the whole thing over. And as you can see, that's starting to look like some reverse wrap cordage. So I'm going to pause the video for just a minute and I'm going to continue about 20 wraps and uh, then I'll, I'll show you how I fold it back and splice in the tails to the main body of the uh, cord. So I'm going to hit pause, and we'll be back in just a few seconds. Okay, so I, uh, I reverse wrapped enough to make about an inch, inch and a quarter loop once it's all, once it's all tied together and spliced in. Um, this, little, this little piece right here that I put in earlier, just a to hold the strands together eight inches down from the end. I'm gonna cut that out a little bit later when I clean up the cord when I'm all said and done. But what I've done now is I've separated the main cords into three groups of four. And as you might imagine, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lay the tails of the eye on top of the uh, the strands that will form the main body of, of, the, of the cord, and I'm going to gently start twisting them in. And 
and I'll do my reverse wrapping from there. So once again, I'm going to start with the middle. Swap it over the top. Wrap the bottom. Flip the whole thing over. Go back to the middle. Swap it to the top. Go to the bottom. Swap the whole thing over. With the middle, swap it with the top, over the bottom. In all cases, what I'm doing is I'm rolling what I'm holding, the top of it, towards me, and then I'm reverse wrapping it over the top. Then I go to the middle, roll it tight, swap to the top, go to the bottom. Swap the whole thing over. I'm going to straighten out my cords here a little bit. All right, so you can see I'm splicing in and I'm reverse wrapping the tails of my eye into the main body of the cordage. So I'm going to uh, pause the video again for just a few seconds and I'm going to finish splicing in these tails and I'll go down a little bit further and I'll show you what that looks like in just a few minutes. Hang tight, back in a sec. Okay, I've uh, finished splicing in the tails for the eye loop, and I have done some reverse wrapping down the main body of the cord. These little final pieces that are left over from the eye loop, I'll trim off later when I, when I clean everything up, and I will also clip out this little piece that I used to uh, hold everything together when I first started. I'll clip that up, clip that off later, clean it all up nicely. Um, it'll probably take me a good hour and a half or so to uh, finish this cord up. And I want to show you if, you, if you stop in the middle and want to take a break and go eat supper or something, how do you know where to pick up? Uh, when you get back to it. And this is what I've found. I've got my three groups of four fibers here. If the, if the middle one is laying over top of the bottom group, if the middle group is laying over top of the bottom group, you start with the middle. You roll this one, flip it over the top. Let's see what that looks like. So... I roll that real tight and flip it over the top. All right. If the top one, if the top one is laying over top of the middle one, you begin with the bottom group of fibers. So now it's time to roll this one back towards me and then flip the whole thing over. Once again, the middle one is laying over the bottom group, so I go to the middle. And now the middle one, excuse me, this top one is laying over the middle one, so I go to the bottom. Okay? That's kind of how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the video for a little while now. I'll be back in probably a couple hours and show you the finished product. So I finished making the cord. It took me about two hours total hands-on time with a few breaks every now and then. Uh, come on in, let's take a look at the, uh, at the results. So here's the eye loop that I made. Looks pretty nice. I trimmed off the, uh, the the little piece of artificial sinew that I used at the beginning to hold all the, the individual strands together. 
And this is where I, uh, I spliced in the, the tails. And I trimmed off all the, the little loose ends that I couldn't quite work into the splice. The rest of the cord is about uh, 3 16 of an inch in diameter. And at the very end, I tied a uh, figure eight stopper knot. We'll see how I use that a little bit later on. And then I finished it with some, uh, some whipping and then trimmed the tails evenly to make a little fan. Kind of looks like a, the end of a bull whip, doesn't it? So my goal was to make a cord that was about as thick as 550 paracord. My goal was not my goal was not to make something ridiculously strong, but nevertheless, this is probably ridiculously strong. The, uh, the tensile strength on uh, the artificial sinew by itself, according to the manufacturer, is about 70 pounds. And you'll recall that I used 12 strands in this particular piece of cord. So 70 times 12 gets me to 840 pounds nominal tensile strength. And then the reverse wrapping adds some synergistic strength to the to the cord. I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, this little piece of cord uh, is up to close to a thousand pounds strong. I don't have any way of confirming that, but that's just my best guess. Anyhow, it turned out very nicely. Maybe you'll give a try to some uh, three ply reverse wrapping yourself and uh, try your hand at splicing in an eye loop. All right, stay tuned and we'll see what we can do with this. Back in a minute. Okay, let's give this new bow cord a try. It's rained a lot recently, it's very humid, and it's cold. I've been having a hard time getting my embers to ignite. This one's lit, but I'm gonna let it coalesce for just a bit. This is my third try today, and my poor little embers have been going out. Sometimes you gotta reveal your failures as well as your successes. So this one I'm babying a bit. Let's see if we can get it out of here. All right. That looks like a big fat ember to me. Nice one. All right. My bird's nest. My bird's nest uh, got a little bit of uh, milkweed pod down in here. Throw that in the fire pit. And as usual, I've got a a little bit of uh, fuzzed up jute twine and some inner bark from a cottonwood tree.
Right. There we go. Whoop. Okay. All right. It is Thanksgiving Day in the year 2020. It, uh, it's been a challenging year. But I do wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. Be safe. See you again soon. Bye-bye.